So um, the main thing is to have the correct dimension. I'll introduce, the, I'll, I'll make sure of that. And then what happens, for instance, for SL3 is that you have only positive, I mean, the, the, the negative of a root is not a root. But that's not in itself a problem. I mean, you can take uh, other copies and so on. So uh, the correct uh, thing, though, are the dimensions. And, uh, Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, this would happen later when we'll construct the uh, high analog of the Gelfand settling. That one is very high dimensional and it will contain, as promised, uh, it will contain the uh, Riemann curvature, so. Yes, yes, so, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, they function like a kind of uh, intertwiners and so, 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 yes, so. Yes, yes, so it will be, uh, we'll have to work uh, consistently between the, the roots and the weights. So this is the, uh, maybe I should send it around. These are the roots. These are the weights of SL4. Yes. And these are the roots of SL4, not at the same scale. So the roots here are the white points. Every fourth, uh, every fourth point uh, is a root here. So they have parity four, as you can see. And, uh, and these, not the blue points, these are the, the uh, roots. And we'll use both. Thank you for the questions. Very good. So we should uh, we should start. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, recall from last time the the roots and weights of uh, S L. Uh, three, which are nice and easy to draw. You see, you can... Uh, the big ones are the roots. And we'll make also, we'll take the origin here. So this is the weight, well, to be weight lattice, and this is a root sub lattice. Recall that the, the weights were the eigenvalues, eigenvalues of representations. So this is, we are here in the case SU3. And these are the eigenvalues of the adjoint representation, which is important because the adjoint acts on the other ones. Yes, so when you act with an EIJ, you translate with this root. So even if you have a, uh, if you had, for instance, your uh, here, let's draw very simply one of uh, one of the a typical set of weights. So this is V, which is C three. Yes, when you move here, 
between them you move with a with a root. So when you act with an element Eij, you move with a root of Eij, which is Hi minus Hj. Now, uh, the fundamental theorem that we're going to use here is a theorem due to Hermann Weil. Uh, we have a, uh, so let's choose these as simple roots. And this would be what's called the vial chamber now. And every representation has a, every reducible has a, uh, Irreducible representation has a highest weight omega in the vial chamber. And we have here uh, this example. This would be co the one corresponding to E1. And E1 as a weight, this would be, if you remember from last time, this would be 2 over 3, negative 1 over 3, negative 1 over 3. This one corresponds to E1. Corresponds to E1. And uh, the multiplicities of weights of this of this uh, irreducible representation are. Uh, e to the, the sum of uh, w in the vial group of uh, e to the w of omega plus rho over the sum of e to the power w of rho. So this is a vial numerator and a vial denominator. This is a little bit uh, hard to read as it is written. It's written with the weights in a multiplicative form. And uh, let me show you actually how to apply it. You'll see then how to read it. Um, what we are going to do is take this denominator and we'll, uh, and uh, there is here something which I should, uh, which we should introduce. There's epsilon of W, where epsilon of W is a sign. of W in the vial group. So the vial group is the group re re uh, generated by reflections in hyperplanes perpendicular to the simple roots. And uh, epsilon is minus one to the power, the number is a sign which counts a parity of the, uh, of the number of reflections. Now, the denominator, we'll call this denominator delta alternating. 
the alternating, and we'll call it the alternating Laplacian. This is a, uh, this is not something used in the literature, but this is how we are going to use it as an alternating Laplacian. What it does is it takes, uh, so in the case of the, uh, uh, in the case, let me, let's go to, to the vial chamber of uh, SL, uh, SL3 or SU3, it depends on how you want to write it. Remember we have discussed this, that uh, given uh, complex Lie algebra can be exponentiated in different ways, exactly like the, uh, uh, like, com like the complex numbers. You can exponentiate all the complex numbers or just the reals or something that would give you a lattice. Uh, now, these are, the, uh, these are the fundamental weights. So this is alpha one, let's call it, and alpha two. And their sum is a vial vector rho. sum of uh, fundamental weights. The fundamental weights were the dual of the simple roots. And uh, for the vial, uh, for the alternating Laplacian, we'll take rho with a plus and then reflect it and we'll take it with alternating sign. So minus, plus, minus. So delta alternating of a function, if we have a function f from the weight lattice into weight lattice, into, uh, let's say, C, then delta alternating of F is a sum of uh, neighbors, is the alternating sum of neighbors, of row neighbors, of W, of rho, so the vial group applied to rho neighbors, exactly like here, so it's a sum, so delta alternating F at a point X is a sum of F of X plus uh, W rho, and here the sum is taken over vial group element with sine epsilon of W. So it's the sum of these six neighbors in this case. And uh, let us see what happens here. Let's not crowd our drawings. So let's see what happens here for the, uh, so this is, here multiplicities are, these are multiplicities of weights. Remember that, uh, that uh, the weights were giving you eigenvalues of the diagonal. So they appear with multiplicities. And uh, now if you, place uh, your, uh, for instance, if we take this element here, we take this to be x and we compute delta 
alternating of the multiplicity function. So this is a multiplicity function of the adjoint delta multiplicity of multi delta alternating of multiplicity at the point x. This is a sum. You can see here this sign is plus, this is minus, this is plus. Yes, so it's a sum of neighbors. And this sum will be, as you can see, will be equal to zero, zero. yes. So is equal to zero. And of course, if you place it in the center or anywhere else, uh, as you, the, uh, the viral theorem states that this sum is equal to zero, except for some obvious points. Namely, if you place your x, for instance, here, then the, uh, the, uh, no, this is still, wait. So if you place your x, uh, yes, here is fine. Then you have the six neighbors. Only one touches our multiplicities. And so here, this, uh, the sign here is plus. And so uh, let's call this y. So delta alternating of the multiplicity at y is equal to plus 1. Yes. And uh, the Weil theorem states that, uh, that these are the only cases which give you, uh, which give you something non-zero. Namely, if you are at the highest weight, this is, let's see here, this is uh, uh, alpha. Alpha is the highest weight. And you go at alpha plus, so this is here, alpha plus rho. Yes. And as you can see, this is, these are the Ws of alpha plus rho. So this is W, a certain W of alpha plus rho. Yes. So here you'll get negative one. So basically in any number of dimensions, it will behave like this. These are the multiplicities. Uh, typically for SL3, let me make a picture which which is general for SL3, because we're going to use it. So for SL3, the picture that appears is this. So these are multiplicities of uh, SL of an e rep of SL3. So the, if we take here, if we add the vector rho, uh, these, by the way, would be roots. This is a root. And <coughs> so the alternating Laplacian is this. the sum of a, of a such a thing. The typical multiplicity would be one 
on this polygon. So the uh, the vertices of uh, the polygon of the polyhedron in general are the vial group applied to the highest weight. The highest weight would be this. And uh, the uh, if you go with rho, rho in the case, so this is rho here. Then you will uh, you will get that at these points. So this is some W of uh, um, highest weight. Let's call it alpha. You see this lies in the in the vial chamber. And this is some W of alpha plus rho with signs. And here, in this case, this is plus minus. So uh, delta alternating applied to W of alpha plus rho. At this point, it's equal to plus one. And this is how you read the, the vial uh, formula. Yes, this, remember that this is a denominator. The vial denominator. And this shows you what happens if you, if you apply the vial denominator, yes? Uh, the main point here is that uh, there is a continuous uh, interaction between the multiplicative and the additive uh, in, the, in the theory of uh, representations of SLN, which we're going to use. So that's why uh, it is convenient sometimes to write the weights in, a multi in, a, in an exponential way following vial. Then the translation is done by multiplication. Uh, these will be the things that we're going to work with. And as you will see, they would give the higher elements uh, HIJ. So they are quite important. Any questions about about these. So this would be the multiplicities would be here one, then here they would be two. And uh, inside here they would be three. And then they would remain in this case three. This is a structure of uh, multiplicities for SL2. And uh, that uh, the vial formula as a uh, generating function was uh, expanded by constant. The constant expansion uh, says that you take, uh, let's take here the uh, simple roots. Where do they appear here? Do you see this? This is the place where you find the simple roots. So take the simple roots.
these are the simple roots. And take now the following function for SL3, it would look like this. and so on. So this function is uh, k of alpha is equal to the number of ways in which alpha can be written as a sum of positive roots. And typical for here, for SL3, this is, these three are roots. And you can write this point either as, see so this is uh, R1, and R2, then this is uh, either R1 plus R2, this is, let's call it R12, and R12 is R12, but it's also R1 plus R2, so the number is 2, it can be written in two different ways, and that's exactly the number two from here. I will let you, uh, as, a, as an exercise in generating function, convince yourselves that, uh, that this is exactly the, the expansion for the denominator. And so uh, we have the formula that the multiplicities, multiplicity function is a sum of, uh, of, uh, uh, rho, vial, of the vial group as usual of epsilon of W times W times uh, uh, the translation Let's write it now like this, the translation by mm, W of rho plus alpha of the function K. So this tells you that if you take the function K here, And uh, just a bit, no, this is, uh, uh, we don't need the rho, the rho is embedded already, so this is W of alpha. So this tells you that uh, you take here the function uh, K, and the translation is by minus. So you take the function k here, this function one, 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 and two, 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 and then you translate it here and you subtract. Subtract this translation at this corner. And then you add it again, you subtract, you add it again, you subtract, yes? and then you get the multiplicities. So this is just another way to read the vial formula. Uh, as for myself, although there are all kinds of ways to find these multiplicities on a practical basis when you work, the easiest way for me is to apply directly the, the alternating Laplacian, namely you, uh, 
you know that on the outside, so on the span of the, uh, so this is the convex span of uh, W alpha, of the vial group times alpha, this is alpha here. So you know that here there's uh, a one, which you can also prove. Uh, and then you simply find uh, that here it must be two because you just apply the alternating Laplacian. The alternating Laplacian is zero everywhere except at these uh, special points in the numerator. Yes, so you find that here it must be two because uh, the alternating Laplacian must be zero. So this convex span, we're going to work with it a lot. This is what Chen Hao was, uh, Chen Hao was asking about whether we'll work with higher things. This is, uh, uh, this is sometimes called a weight permutohedron. In the, in the, uh, in the current literature, uh, we'll call it simply a hex. We're going to work with it with it a lot. The convex hole, yes. We'll use it. Uh, we'll we'll be very specific about what we use. Sometimes we'll use just these vertices. Sometimes it's, uh, but normally the convex hole, yes. The hex. <laughs> So this is what we need in order to um, to work with the to work toward the higher ribbon. <coughs> the problem is that uh, the multiplicities as written there are a big alternating sum. The wire group can be very big. Um, let me mention, let me lower it here and mention it just as a, uh, just, uh, there are two formulae for the order of the vial group. One is due to vial, one is uh, later. The first, the first formula is the following. You take the, uh, so this is for a graph with n vertices. Well, let's put here an ADE, but uh, this, this works uh, uh, in a more, I mean, an arrow works in a much more general case uh, with n vertices, uh, ADE graph G. So let's put it uh, like this. The order of the vial group is equal, is made of three things. One is uh, the number of points in G factorial. Then uh, the second part is a product over the uh, fine I in the vertices of the affine G of uh, mu of I, this is the uh, Peron Frobenius eigenvector. And finally, it's the number of uh, ones in the vertices of the affine G 
for which mu of i is equal to 1. These form in various ways a group. Uh, it form, they form a group either if we view our graph as a subgroup, they form the center of the vial group of the, excuse me, the center of the uh, Lee group built on it. And they also form the quotient between the weight lattice and the root lattice. The weight lattice is a group with addition. The root lattice is a sub lattice. And the quotient between the two is exactly this. So this is this part. So this is a dimension of this. So this is center of the Lie group. And this is also the roots, the weights over roots. And this is also the uh, the uh, uh, characters of uh, subgroup of Z2 of, uh, of um, SU2 in the Mackay correspondence. And we'll find it over and over, this, this center. So uh, his dimension is a number of ones. And here, these are the vertices of the affine. So let's compute one so that you can see, for instance, for E6. This is E6 affine. And the Perron eigenvalue, the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue, eigenvector with eigenvalue 2, which we discussed at the beginning. So the, vial, the order of the vial group in this case is 6 factorial times uh, 1, 2, 3, 1 times 2, 2, well, let's put 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3 times 3, which is a 3 ones. So this is a Z mod 3. This is the, the quotient between. Uh, so this is a number of ones. And in this case, uh, the roots over the weights are uh, Z mod. Uh, the weights over the roots are Z mod 3 in this case. There's another formula which uh, is due to Chevalet, which is that the order of the vial group is the product of uh, the i in exponents of g of uh, i plus 1 over i. Yeah, so 
Ja. Yes, let, let's do the SLN here. So SLN, yes, we'll have n factorial. Uh, yes, so for SLN we have uh, one and then one, one, one. Yes. So here there are n of them and there's an extra one here. Yes, so we get uh, n, uh, n factorial times n plus one, these are the ones, yes, which is n plus one factorial. This is for SL n plus one. This is a graph a n. Uh, yes, uh, the proof of this is basically the following. So I'll make a sketch of it, which would uh, answer your question. The, uh, uh, you take some fundamental period. So fundamental period of weights and it's okay you have to use your operatic voice uh, James so uh, fundamental period of weights and this will be a parallelepiped And it will have in the in the direction of the fundamental weights alpha. It will have exactly mu of alpha, the dimension. So if you have a if you have this alpha here. Yes, the fundamental uh, parallelepiped for the weights will have will be will have length two in that direction, not one. And you can uh, so you take this uh, mu of alpha. So this means that the volume of this will be the product of uh, mu of alphas. Uh, in uh, para in unit parallelograms, parallelepipeds. And then, uh, then each of these unit parallelepipeds is uh, gives you n factorial simplices, which are the vial alcoves, which we're going to use. Yes, because a cube decomposes into, uh, an n-dimensional cube decomposes into n factorial simplices. Yes. And, uh, and finally, the last component, you, for the last component, you go from weights. So the period of roots is a period of weights times the weights of the roots. Weights lattice over roots lattice. And then you do, uh, that's in the end, that's how you count the, the order of the wire group. Uh, so the period of roots is bigger, you see, 
this, in this case, you have a period of, uh, of uh, weight, which is basically, it's a uh, one by one. Uh, then you take, you can take here, so this is a simplex of weights for SL4. You can take a period of weights, which is something that goes from the center to this corner, yes? You see as a parallelepiped here. And this has dimension uh, four fact, uh, uh, three, so this, this should be four fact, uh, yes, it has uh, uh, one for one, so it has six things. We are in A3. And then uh, uh, here, the ratio between this, uh, the unit, uh, the unit period here is uh, it's different. This is the, you can see here the unit period of weight at the top and the unit period of roots underneath. Yes. So actually, if you're interested, this will be exactly the higher ribbon. This here will be the higher ribbon, and this would be a higher diagonal of matrices. And uh, so that's the last term of this expression, yes. Uh, this one is done by some Betty numbers. It's a bit more abstract, the proof of the other formula. Very good. So uh, let me, uh, so I think we, we have prepared uh, this next uh, time. We'll, uh, we'll do the analog of the projection formula that we did for the usual ribbon. But let me show you the vial denominator uh, once more. On the, on the ribbon that we used before, it's quite, uh, uh, it appears in a quite striking way. So namely, let's take, uh, let's take uh, the, uh, the ribbon that we had before. Let's, uh, you see it, so this is level zero, one, two. Oh, let, I think we'll use a D4, which is, uh, quite three, four, and uh, so here this is a graph is D four, n is equal to six for this. Remember this is two times four minus two, two n minus two for the DNs. So in six steps, we have arrived half the ribbon down. So this is half the ribbon. And uh, the simple weights, the simple roots are these three and then we go coxeter minus one. So this one here. So these are the simple roots. Of D4. And uh, now what we can do is take a, uh, what we do is we, we take every, we take the essential path, what we call fusion from the, from each of them. So this is a fusion from this kind of point, and this is a fusion from this, from the triple point, which is one, 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 two, one, 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 and one, and the rest, it continues here with zeros, 
by the way. That's important. Here it continues with zeros. And then it goes to the negative. And now we can, we add this from all simple roots or equivalently from rows one and zero and one. So what we'll get is the following. You see we have here one, 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 and here we start also with one, and we'll write here one plus, we'll write here uh, four, which is one plus one plus one. This is one from itself, and these are from above. This is from itself. So these are essential paths starting from these four points. And then we continue by harmonically. This is four, this is three. This here is uh, nine minus four is five. This is this should be two, two, two. This is one again. You may recall that these are the simple roots. Yes. And this is the uh, vial denominator. as dimension. So the dimension formula is that the dimension of alpha is the exactly the uh, this is the sum is, uh, let's see, uh, the dimension of a representation. So alpha is in the E reps of G. And the dimension of alpha is uh, uh, sum, uh, is a product, excuse me, of uh, all uh, the vial group elements of the uh, 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 well, we'll take the uh, alpha inner product. So let's write first the, the denominator vial in W, and it will be. Uh, let, let's write it in the following form. The distance, so it's a product of the distance to, since we have only one minute, the distance to the vial mirrors from the trivial representation. And here we have the product of the distance to vial mirrors from alpha. So this is a vial denominator, and now we are going to just add to this, for instance, one irreducible. So we'll add here plus one. This would be plus one. Please use a different kind of marker. This would be here plus one plus one. This would be here plus one and here this would be a plus one. 
So the product, so the dimension of the representation alpha, which is here in red, is a representation which has this as fundamental weight. The dimension is 1 plus 1. So 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 times 4 plus 1 times 3 plus 1 times 3 times 3 plus 1 times 5 plus 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 plus 1 times 2. So this is 2, 2 times 1, 2, 1 over the same without the plus. 1, 1, 1, uh, 4, 3, 3, 3, 5, 2, 2, 2, 1. Yes? And uh, uh, this works actually as quantum numbers as well. So on the ribbon, you can uh, uh, you can find the dimension of uh, of such uh, representation. Once again, what we did was the vial denominator, this product of the distance to vial mirrors. A vial mirror is. Uh, exactly the, ortho the orthogonal to the hyperplane orthogonal to a root. So the distance to a vial mirror is exactly the inner product with a root, which by our ribbon is exactly the number that we get here. And so the product of these numbers will be the vial denominator in the dimension formula and the product of the numbers augmented by one is, uh, is uh, the vial numerator. And remember that that's exactly what we computed last time for the fundamental represent for the adjoint representation of SL3. So this, uh, so our previous ribbon also gives us the, uh, the vial uh, dimension formula, it's built in and uh, I am working toward a, uh, uh, a, an intrinsic proof of this, uh, of this uh, formula by building uh, representations. So let me stop here. If you have any questions, uh, so here's what we'll have. This, is, uh, this will be a matrix unit, by the way. This is a higher matrix unit, so if you... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll reach that uh, quite soon.